Now, you can go and check in the other languages, find out how they describe, because language is the best store of knowledge. The way people describe things gives more information than anything else. So I would like each one of you to go and uh, cut out an audit in the indigenous languages, find out how they call these practices. Therefore, homosexuality from the beginning in Africa is not regarded as sex, as the Europeans are trying to say. Africa is the origin of man. All those Europeans and the Chinese and the Indians, all of them were former Africans. Africa is the pioneer for civilization. The first civilization in the world was in Egypt. And those people who were in Egypt were not Arabs. Arabs came there recently. All the great religions of the world, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, were looked after in the kindergarten of Africa when they were still young. Moses was in Egypt. Muhammad ran to Ethiopia when the Arabs wanted to kill him. Jesus was hidden was hidden in Africa when Herod wanted to kill him. Unfortunately, at some stage, because of internal weaknesses, Africa lost leadership in the world. Because of internal weaknesses, which we must always be conscious of, and Africa was colonized, slaves were taken from Africa, a lot of wars, but the African population survived. In spite of bad leaders, in spite of colonialism, in spite of the slave trade, Africa, Africans survived. And we survived mainly because of our strong culture. Now, that is the one they are attacking now. They are attacking our culture, which is the bedrock of our survival over the ages. And that's why we say this is not acceptable. It is a waste of time. Nobody should even attempt to do that. I delayed in signing the bill mainly because I wanted to be convinced myself, not because of pressure from here or from anywhere. I was sure that the promoters 
of homosexuality, we are criminals. I was sure that those who become homosexuals for mercenary reasons, because they want money, they are, they are pitiable. and should be punished. If they don't if they don't reform if they don't reform. But I was not sure about one category. I thought there was a category of people who are born abnormal. That's what I thought. And I wanted to be convinced about that. What if somebody is, is abnormal? Now that's why I involved the scientists. Over the whole world, by the way, not only the ones over here, even the ones from America, we are we're, we're not categorical that homosexuality was either genetic or even congenital. They couldn't say that. When, when I insisted, I said, you put it in writing. <laughs> they couldn't. They, they feared. They feared to be discredited professionally. And my scientists here, we are categorical. They said, this is behavior. It is not genetic. It is not congenital. It is behavior. It is not nature. It is nurture. It is not because, not because of somebody is born like that. It is because of the way somebody is brought up. That's why I said I'm now going to sign the bill because I am convinced with the available information that these people are not born like that. They just learn and they can unlearn what they have learned. Besides, I came to learn that homosexuality was very unhealthy, very unhealthy. This is because they go to the wrong address. Why do you go to the wrong address? The sexual organs of, of human beings are highly specialized. They are engineered for that purpose. Now, those who want to go off the point, they are really, I don't want to use very strong words. And because that place where they go is not for that purpose. Because initially I didn't even know where, where they were going. I, I had to, try to ask. Until I was told where, where they go. And apparently because that part is not for that purpose, it creates very unhealthy repercussions. You know, the intestines come out. This is terrible. Why do these people support something like that? It is, it is criminal, it is so cruel. 
I don't know whether I have not checked with the doctors whether they can through surgery reverse that. Can you put back the intestines once they have come out? So I'm now mobilized to fight that war. Now, the problem is the laziness of Africans. When we talk of dependence, when you hear these Europeans saying they are going to add aid, they are going to do that, we don't need aid in the first place. Because a country like Uganda is one of the richest on earth. One of the speakers said, I think it was Nsawabuturo, uh, who said that the Bible is against homosexuality. That's true. But even for the Bible, the Africans, as I told you, regarded the few homosexuals who were here as a bifuire, as walking dead. Somebody who is dead but walking, it's free. That's what it means. So it's not just the Bible. It is our culture and heritage. Now, finally, I want to thank Honorable Bahati and his group. Because initially I was not concentrating on this issue. I was concentrating on the roads, on the electricity, on security, and I didn't know there was such a, a big problem of, uh, of homosexuals. In fact, uh, somebody said he uh, wanted to bring me a homosexual, so I asked him what is his problem, why? Because I, I, I've never talked to one. There's somebody who said, can you meet homosexual? I said, yes, you bring them to me so that I, I ask them. Because I have never had a chance to interact with any one of them. So, these people, they concentrated on this line which we had not concentrated on. Initially, we thought they were wasting our time, that they were bringing up something which was not a big issue. But later on, uh, when we got into the issue, and especially when the Western countries started uh, giving us orders, we don't like, I don't like orders from uh, anybody outside Uganda. Uganda is a sovereign country African people are the sovereign people. Our leader, Mwari Munyerere, once said, independence, freedom, means the freedom to make our own mistakes. That's what Nyerere said. Let us do our own things. If we make a mistake, we shall discover it by ourselves. It, it, that's what Marim said. Marim said independence means the right to make your own mistakes. So that you, you, you learn from them. So I don't know why these, these people become preachers of the, for the whole world. You do this, you do that. How can, how, how can I go into somebody's home and tell him you do this, you do that? Bad manners. When I go to somebody's home, even if I even if I say, I say something wrong, I just keep quiet. I pretend I have not seen it. The problem with the Europeans, they have no politeness.
Africans don't do that. You don't talk about other people's homes. No. You don't talk about other people's homes. Talk about your home. You have got your home. Why don't you talk about it? So, the young people You take it and know that there is nothing good in this imported culture. You don't have to be lured. Yes, you don't have to be lured by this foreign culture. There are even other terrible things. There's what they call oral sex. That you have sex by mouth. Imagine. The mouth is for eating, not for that purpose. As a result of oral sex, People now have got gonorrhea of the throat and gonorrhea of the mouth. You know, just like animals. The mouth is for eating. Maybe this is a good chance because sometimes we don't talk about, about, you know, Africans also are too shy. They don't talk about some of these things. But because they have provoked us, I will now be talking to you directly about them. Oral sex is idiocy. These fellows have brought, I want these uh, newspaper people to capture the picture. Ah, come, come. This is the industrial center in Tororo. which some of your parasites were determined to, to destroy, not to allow to, to, to take place. Go and show it to the bishops there so that they can see what, what moral job they have. Huh? This, this is going to be the industrial city there. But people there, some of the people are fighting it. Go and show it to the bishops there. 